This video is sponsored by Unity. Currently on the Unity Asset Store, there is a mega bundle sale where you can save up to 90% on some great hand-picked assets. If you're at all interested, please check it out using the link in the description below or in the comments. And if you actually decide to make any purchases, that'll help in supporting the channel too. Now let's get to the video. Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Mirror multiplayer tutorial. Today we'll be creating the round system so that when the players have all spawned in to the level, it goes 3, 2, 1, go, and then on go you can do whatever you like. For this video we'll just log a message when it's done, but in the next video we'll actually handle input so that when you actually start the game the players can't move, they can maybe look around, but that's it. And then as soon as it says go when it's gone 3, 2, 1, go, the players can then move and attack and do whatever they need to do. Hope you're looking forward to the video, let's get started. So for the usual three steps, step one will be the coding, so we'll be doing the round system and making some modifications to our network manager. Step two will be setting up the prefabs, actually creating the round system prefab and setting up the animator. And then finally for step three, we'll be testing it on the two clients and watching that it works on both of them. Let's get started. So the first thing to do is to make the round system. It's gonna be a network behavior. Once you've made it, just leave it as it is. Don't add any of this other code, just make the round system. Then if we jump over to our network manager, we need to add a field for a game object that's gonna be our round system. So this is what we're spawning in, okay? So just like we spawn in the player spawn system, we also need to spawn in the round system. One more thing for cleaning up events is that we need to know when the server stops because if we have the spawn system in the scene and then we finish and for example, stop the game, we might go back to the main menu. We need to actually clean up some events because the, the round system is actually going to be listening for, for example, when the player takes damage, we haven't got that far yet, but when the player takes damage and they die, we need to know for the round system to check how many players are left. And when there's only one player left, it means we're done with the round, move on to the next one. So this is an important event to have. We need to know when the server stops. And to call this, we'll scroll down, okay? And we need to go to the method where we cleared our room players. Make sure we also clear our game players. And then before that, it doesn't actually matter either way, but I think it does actually make more sense to do it beforehand because then it means that if we need to quickly, before we stop, access anything from these two lists, we can before we clear them. So on server stopped, question mark, invoke, oops. Then if we scroll down further, we have the method where we spawn in the player spawn system when we change to a scene underscore map, so a level. We also want to spawn in the round system, so it's just the same, but for the round system instead. So now for the round system, okay, we need to make sure we have reference to an animator because we're going to be using the animator to actually drive the round system. It's gonna go three, two, one, go. And then once it's done, we actually need to call this method countdown ended. So remember, this is a public void, it has no references. That's because it's called via the animator. And what it does is it just disables the animator basically. Uh, just like in the other scripts, I've got this uh, getter to basically cache the network manager singleton, but as a network manager lobby. So if it's null, then we make it a new instance of it. Well, new instance, I mean, we go grab it. Uh, but if we already have it, then we just return it like this. So we don't have to cast every time, we just do it once and then we cache. And what I've been doing is I've been splitting up the server and the client logic into regions just to separate it out. So for the server, what we need is we need the on start server method. So remember this is called on start for the server. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to subscribe to two methods. We're gonna, on when the server stops, we're gonna clean up server. So just make a private void with no parameters. And then when server's readied, so remember this is not actually when the server's readied, it's when someone is readied on the server, okay? Uh, we then check to start the round. So basically when people load into the game, every time someone loads in, we check, should we start, should we start? And then eventually we should. So the check to start round method is a private void as well, but it takes in a network connection. Then remember on destroy is called on mono behaviors when they get destroyed. So that could be because you're changing scene or because it's manually being destroyed directly. Uh, whenever that happens, we want to call the cleanup method, okay? So there's two different times we're gonna call it. Um, make sure this on destroy is a server callback though, which means it only gets called on the server, okay? And then we have cleanup server. So this method I was on about earlier, this is for unsubscribing from the events. The reason I don't unsubscribe in here is actually because um, we need to care about this method. The, the problem about these two is that the um, on destroy could be called just because we're going between levels. If we go between level one and two, the server still exists. We're just going between two levels. So that's fine. But then there's also situations where the maybe the server goes offline, you know, the game ends and the server stops. When that happens, we need to subscribe, uh, unsubscribe as well. The problem is when you actually stop the server, this on destroy is not called because the second you stop the server, this server callback won't get called because you're no longer the server. It's a problem I was having the other day and I came up with my solution for it. I couldn't really find many of us. Um, this is the best thing I could come up with. Feel free to let me know if you have any other solutions um, for unsubscribing on the server. But yeah, this, this works just fine. 
Okay, so for start round, this is a server callback. So the difference really between a server callback and just a server tag is that uh, we don't get errors on server callback. If a client calls it, it just ignores it. Now, this um, start round method is also called by the animator. And the thing is, the server as well as the clients all have animators. But we only care when the server finishes. So this means only on the server do we do this. But if it's a client, we don't. And what do we do? Well, we say start round. Okay, now this is down in the client bit. We'll get to that in a minute. Just make a uh, private void start round or RPC start round. And then finally, another server method, check to start round. So what this does is this happens, remember, when someone is ready on the server, we say if room.gameplayers.count. So if the number of uh, game players where they are ready. Okay, this means basically get the number of people that are ready. If that is not equal to the number of people, then return. So obviously, this will basically be true when everyone's ready. And then once everyone's ready, we uh, turn on the animator and we uh, tell all the clients to effectively do theirs too. Remember, the countdown on the server is for actually starting the level. The countdown on the clients is just a visual representation of it. Now down here for the client, we have two methods, both client RPCs. So remember, they have to start with RPC. Uh, one to start the countdown, which just enables the animator. So that's called here, remember? Then start round, which for now, just debug.log start. But what it will do is it will, you know, turn on and off input and that kind of thing. So the first thing to do now for step two is to actually create the round system. So I've got it as a prefab in my resources spawnable prefabs folder. It has to be in here, remember, because this is spawned on the network. So it has to be in the resources folder. And I'm going to go to the round system prefab. Okay. So on the root, what we have is we have a network head entity component because it belongs to uh, someone, which is the server. And it's also on all clients. So you need a network head entity. And then we add the round system that we just wrote. And then we also have to add an animator. Now the animator is to handle the three, two, one, go. Okay, now make sure the animator is disabled by default because we don't want the animation to start right away. If an animator is enabled um, initially, then it will just start playing animation. You need to wait. Okay, so we turn it off by default and we drag it in as a reference to the round system. And then we also have an animator controller, obviously to run our animation. So I made a folder for this, make a new animator controller and clips are under create and then they are both here, animation and animator controller. Okay, so the controller is over here. It just has one clip, just, just drag in the clip, okay? Uh, we just have this one clip. And I'll show you the animation quickly, but I'm not gonna spend this video actually showing you how I set it up. I mean, you can see the keyframes and how it works and you can do whatever you want to do for yours. But essentially I have different game objects, one with a number three, then number two, number one, whoops, number one, and then a begin. Okay, so just different text. And then what happens is we, um, start here and we start with the free it goes big okay it stays for a little bit then it shrinks and then as soon as it shrinks we also disable it and we enable number two and we do the same thing again we make it go big we hold it for a bit and we could go small then we disable two enable one make it go big say the same small and then when we get to here this is just as the begin is about to happen okay so this is when we want to tell everyone okay now you can enable your input and play we want to start as soon as begin starts appearing so we have this event here Okay, you add it by pressing this button here and then we can call start round. Okay, so you get all the methods on here and I know there's tons on this mono behavior because there's literally any public thing you can call. Make sure you call start round. Okay, and then um, all I have here is begin goes big and stays and goes. And then right at the end, I have another event to call countdown ended because this is when we should actually turn off the animator. We don't want to keep it on. It's done basically. So we turn it off. So it goes three, two, one, begin. And we've got the two events. Those are the most important parts. Now I've got it at three seconds and four seconds 30. It's really up to you. Just remember the gameplay will start when um, this one's hit, the start round. Currently we just log to the console saying start, but in the future videos, as I said, this will when, uh, be when input is enabled and everything will start. Now, if we go to the network manager, we need to go to the prefabs part here and make sure you drag in your round system. Uh, so obviously go here and search round system. There it is. Make sure if you're on scene, go to assets. Reference your round system, and now we should be able to test it. One thing to note, guys, in case you're a bit confused, uh, if I go to lobby scene one, um, I've imported two assets, Pro Builder and Pro Grids, just to make the scene look a bit better, and so that if I ever make some more slightly interesting levels, uh, that's why the ground looks a little bit different. But I've just kept it the same as a 25. I think it was 25 by 25 grid. Um, so yeah, that, that's all I've changed, just the floor. Okay. Now let's go ahead and build. Okay, I've got the two clients. I'm going to go with confirm host, confirm join, ready, ready, go. Now, when I press go, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move this one down here so we can see the top of both of them. You should see the countdown going three, two, one, go. We'll actually also select the console, so you should also see here it will say start when it's uh, got to begin. Okay, let's see if it works. Start game. Okay, three, two, one, and then you see start here. Okay, everything works perfectly. Okay, now the only problem is the player and uh, the players can actually move and do stuff right now whilst it's counting down. In your game, you probably want it to keep them still and not let them attack. So that's something we'll cover in the next video so that this one doesn't go on too long. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. If you want access to the project, go ahead to the description, go find the GitHub link and it's called uh, like mirror multiplayer tutorials. Okay, you can get access to all the code and project files there. Thanks guys for watching. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to John Saluk, Liz Kimber, David McDermott, Exit Return Zero, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Eurus Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Buddha Ray, and Memory Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those, checking any of those out, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.